Okay guys, in this video we're going to talk about how to choose a powder charge for your 243 Winchester. The bullet that I'm going to be choosing a powder charge for is the 100 grain Sierra Game King. So, getting into how to select a powder charge, there's some very simple things to this and then we'll get more into the technical side. Gun powders vary by the different types of powder that there are. They've given them different names and numbers to signify that they're different and they offer different things. I've got mine loosely arranged from fast powders to slow burning powders. So the idea behind this is fast powders usually work better with light bullets and slow powders usually work better with heavier bullets and that is for the caliber. So if I shoot a 100 grain 243 it's going to need a slower powder but if I shot a 110 grain in a 300 wind mag it's going to need a little bit faster powder because of the way the pressures work and curve and do all the crazy stuff that they do. So to keep this simple let's take a look at a data manual to see what the suggested powders are. Now as you'll notice as you go through a data manual certain powders will appear under multiple bullets. That's because there's a range of bullets that they work with. H322 works with the light bullets in a 243. Some of them. You can find the low data out there. Varget is a little bit more towards the middle of it. You'll be able to find multiple bullets and it's got a pretty wide range of what Varget can do. However, 7828, you're really only going to see that with the heavy for caliber bullets. So, let's take a look at some load data. Now, by the time you watch this, this data may be outdated, so be sure to check with whatever's current. So for the 243 Winchester, Hornady's got some listed right here. And it's pretty simple. They give you different types of powders, and then they show you the different charge weights and the expected velocity out of them. Notice how some don't go up to the max velocity, and some of them don't go down to the minimum velocity. This is because of the different powder burn rates. So the different ways you can learn about your different powder burn rates is a little silly magazine like this or even online. Uh, you can go to Hodgden online and all this is, is a description of what the powders are typically used for and what they're known for. So that's how to learn about what types of powders there are. I highly suggest you get one of these. One of these for the 243 Winchester. What this is, is it is load data for the 243 Winchester compiled from all these different companies, which is a great way to go. That way I can check Hornady's 100 grain load data, Sierra's Hornady load data, Spears load data, Nosler, I can compare them all and write them down into a list. So I found, I found some powders that I think will work well with a 100 grain bullet. Let's take a look at the list that I created. Okay, now you definitely don't want to copy this list because if I wrote one number wrong, um, it could blow your gun up. So there you go. So here's the idea. I wrote down info for H4350, Hybrid 100V, and 7828 SSC. Here are the sources that I got the data from. So Hodgden offers a manual, Hornady does, and so does Nosler. But within the different companies, they may not have each powder listed for them. So I gathered the three powders that I wanted and I got all of the data that I could out of the data that I have available. So for H4350, Hodgden, Sierra, and Hornady all had suggested powder load data for it. For Hybrid 100V, only Hodgden had load data for it. For 7828, had those three. Simple as that. So then I write the minimum and the max and I will compare them to each other. So for H4350, the minimums are pretty similar and the maximums are pretty similar. So to do starting charges, I try and make a window between both of these listed data. So what I would do in an instance like this, 37 grains seems to be the minimum and 40.8 grains seems to be the maximum. I would say 37 and a half grains, 38 grains, 38 and a half, 39. That falls between the window of both of the sets of data and it should be safe according to both of these manuals which really cements if your load data will work. If it shows up as a safe charge between all of the different companies, 
it's a pretty safe bet that that's going to work for you. A few of the ways that I choose which powder I'm going to use is case fill levels. So this is a very fine powder. You can see that the grains are cut a little bit smaller. The diameter of the grains themselves are a lot smaller as well. So they're not going to fill up a case as quickly as something that's cut and something that has a little big, bigger as something that has a little larger diameter kernels on them as well. So this is going to fill up a case a little bit better, but obviously depending on the bullet you choose, you may not be able to use a large powder like this. But ideally, I want to use a bulkier powder to get close to 100% case fill. I don't necessarily want a compressed charge, but I want to get a full case. Another consideration when choosing a type of powder is I want a wide range that I can actually use. So for a good example right here, H380, 32.8, 35.3. For the range that it offers me, it doesn't give me a whole lot more velocity or anything like that. Whereas IMR 3031, it's got a large range that I can use and play with to look for different accuracy nodes and to kind of figure out a charge and tune the charge to the rifle. Whereas even 760, not that big of a window, but if you got 4831, like I just showed you right there, it's got the whole range that Sierra lists. So that's a better powder to go with. Also, it's going to be a little bit bulkier than uh, H380 would, so I'm going to get a better case fill. Now, as far as load data is concerned, Sierra Manual right here doesn't list any of the powders that I'm looking for, that I have. So take this with a grain of salt. Load data can be interchangeable or at least similar to it. So you want to start low if you're using, say, Hornady's 100 grain load data. Hornady, in their manuals, they will have a variation of 100 grain bullets that will work for that. Basically, it's a good idea of where to start compared to the exact Sierra data. Sierra is going to have a better idea of what is what exactly is the minimum and the maximum, but using, say, Hornady's 100 grain load data, it will get you close, it'll get you a good starting charge, and you can work your way up from there anyway. Obviously, keep in mind their max pressures listed and their minimum pressure listed. And as I showed you in my list, I compare them and I come up with something in a window there that's a safe charge between all the different load data. So that's how I do it. That's how I choose my powder charges. You're going to have to decide for yourself which powder you want. You may have completely different powders on hand, and you may have to use an obscure powder. Maybe H322 isn't the most ideal powder for you at the time, but it might be the only thing you have access to. Varget can be found in load data for many, many calibers. For 308, for 223, for 30-06, for 243. It's a great universal powder and it works really well. It's supposed to be pretty temperature insensitive and basically from lot to lot it's supposed to have very consistent burn speeds. So that's basically what I do to choose a powder charge. In the next video I'm going to go across loading them up and going through brass prep and then we'll talk about the loads that I actually chose from these powders for this bullet. I appreciate your time. I hope this helped you guys out. I haven't really seen a lot of information like this out there and I really thought that it should be shared. So I really do hope this helped. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I try to respond to as many as I can. I'm excited for the next part of the series, and we will talk to you guys later.